Hi card makers, Trisha Morris here at Club Scrap with another edition of our card making tutorials. This time I'm featuring the Confetti collection and it's a beauty. Very fun, bright colors. We've got this clever little shaker card set. We're gonna make four of these. And of course I'll just show you how to make one of each of the card styles we're featuring this month. And then we have this uh, double flap, uh, split flap card here. It's, it's kind of neat how it comes together. And it has this gorgeous embossed foil on the side. I've embossed it, so embossing is completely optional here. Um, some of us don't have those little clever machines, but even if you don't, these are gonna be some fun cards. And we'll make four of these as well. And then we also have some really nice uh, five by seven cards with some super clever greetings and also a clever foil embellishment that we'll be creating out of the foil that comes in the kit. And then, because there was enough paper left over, I was able to get two bonus cards. And as always, the envelopes required for all 14 cards are included right in your kit. We've got a lot to do, so I hope you have your instructions printed and your kit handy along with a trimmer and the accordion pocket file. If you choose to make the shaker cards, you'll also need some double-sided tape and there's just a few other basic supplies. Well, let's get going. I think it's always good to start out by putting the paper in the order in which it will be trimmed. So let's go ahead and sort this entire stack of paper included in your kit. It all starts out as 12 by 12s. So we'll just pull the sheets out and stack them face down on our trimmer. So the first piece we need is this pink plane, and then we're going to go ahead and trim one of these white prints. So I'll put that face down on the trimmer. Then we need an aqua plane and a blue plane. So there's a big difference between the aqua and the blue, obviously. One more pink plane, and then the other white print, followed by the yellow plane. Getting all this in order here. And then we'll continue with the other aqua and the other blue. And then two white planes. And then you're gonna we'll, uh, go, go ahead and trim the cut aparts into individual pieces. So we'll start with um, this piece that has the word happy birthday in the upper right corner here. And then also this other sheet of cut aparts. We have, it has these uh, smaller strips in the corner. And then we're gonna trim uh, our transparency that will be used for the window on our shaker card and we'll follow that up finally with the Renea foil, which is basically um, foil laminated, laminated onto cardstock so that the foil has two-sided, gold on one side, turquoise on, turquoise on the other, and it um, really is fun to work with. It holds its shape, it's easily folded, punched, die cut, and embossed. We're going to do tons of fun things with that. All right, without further ado, let's grab our trimmer and we'll get started by cutting our first sheet of paper, the pink plain. And before we cut this, I want to make sure we uh, follow the grain direction properly. For this particular sheet of paper, hold it by the edge and just check which edge allows the paper to dip more easily. So if I hold it like this, I can study the behavior. And like this, it really wants to dip. So I want this paper to dip easily from top to bottom. Then place it in your trimmer and we will cut at 11 and five and a half. Then take the two pieces that should be the same size at five and a half. We're gonna cut them horizontally at eight and a half. We'll set aside these two pieces to be scored and then the other rectangles will go in pocket C of your accordion pocket file. Then you have this long strip. We're, we'll cut this horizontally at seven and a half. And since the strip is so narrow, I like to bring it down a little bit below the inch markings so that I can see that measurement better. This large piece actually will be a scrap and then the smaller piece will be placed in pockets D. We're using all four pockets today because we have four different card styles. Okay, so now this next piece, again, hold it by the edge, study the behavior, make sure it dips most easily from top to bottom. We're repeating this. So the first cut is at 11 and then five and a half. Stack the two pieces, trim horizontally at eight and a half. 
set aside the two rectangles for scoring and the other two smaller pieces get filed in pocket C trim this bad boy horizontally at seven and a half and set aside the long strip and the small piece goes in pocket D again okay moving right along to the aqua let's study the paper it dips easily from top to bottom that's how I want it and we'll cut at 11 and a quarter it's a little different and six and a quarter rotate this larger piece and cut at nine I'm going to set this piece aside for scoring and this larger piece is officially a scrap but I'll show you some ways that I implemented it into the cards we have another long piece that's wide here we're going to trim this horizontally at ten and a quarter seven and three and three quarters now the piece in the base of your trimmer right now put that in pocket a there are two more pieces rectangles that are the same size we're going to trim these horizontally at four and a half and file both larger rectangles in pocket a that does leave us two smaller scraps that definitely are not used as well as this long skinny piece i'll set it aside for use later if i want and then you've got this long strip which i'll cut at seven file this in pocket c and the smaller strip is a scrap okay we do the same exact steps with the blue plane making sure it dips easily <laughs> try to throw it around easily top to bottom 11 and a quarter and six and a quarter. Rotate and cut at nine. Large piece gets scored, so I'm setting that aside. The smaller one is a scrap for later. Pick up the other larger blue, we'll cut horizontally at ten and a quarter, seven, three and three quarters. File this larger piece in pocket A. Pick up the two remaining larger rectangles, they should be the same size, and cut it four and a half. File in pocket A, and then you have two more scraps that are not used, plus this other guy for possible use. Now we're moving on to the pink plane and a white print. And because the next steps include the same trimming for the same two pieces, I'm gonna get a little bold now and trim them at the same time. You do not, of course, have to do this, but if you would like to, you can. And I'm checking for dip now. So I wanted to dip easily, top to bottom, as I put it into the trimmer, and same for this one. I always just check both sides to make sure. And we'll cut these together. Again, if, if you want, you can cut them separately. And as I just prepped this, I realized a portion of the blue got left behind. And this does trim at seven. Sorry about that. Seven, and then pocket C along with a smaller scrap. Okay, dipping top to bottom now with the pink and the white. We're gonna once again create a narrow strip. So that's 11 and a quarter and seven. Again, different trimming. Rotate and cut at 10. Set aside to be scored. And these uh, narrow strips here will cut horizontally at six. File the larger pieces in pocket B and some scraps. Take the next two pieces, they should, you know, they're the same, uh, four and a quarter by 12. We're gonna cut them horizontally at six. Stack them all up and put them in pocket B. The narrow strip here will cut horizontally, of course, <laughs> vertically would be weird, <laughs> at nine and a half and five and pop all of this in pocket D now the yellow plane this is a single so we do not trim this you know more than one like this so just one at a time and this time I'm going to check for the dip and it dips easily left to right is what I'm after so rotate the paper appropriately and cut at eight then rotate this eight inch piece we'll cut at eleven and a quarter nine and four and a half now the piece in the base plus one right next to it should be the same size we're going to cut those horizontally at four inches to create four little panels 
set these four panels aside to be scored. And then pick up this next yellow piece. We will cut horizontally at six and three quarters, four and a half, two and a quarter. You're gonna have three squares that are the same size, pocket D and a scrap. You also have this long skinny piece. You can set that aside for potential use, otherwise scrap it. And the final piece of yellow horizontally at six. And both of these go in pocket C. Hang in there, we're getting close. We're gonna cut the next two sheets at the same time. So make sure we're dipping easily top to bottom with our grain direction. And if that's new to you, that by, by paying attention to this, our folds look so much better and work better. They don't get all crumpled and crinkly. Okay, so we're gonna trim both of these, the blue and the aqua, at seven. Rotate and cut at 10. Set these aside to be scored. Then the two narrow strips will cut horizontally at six. File in pocket B. We have some scraps here. Next two we'll pick up, trim together horizontally at nine, six, and three. Okay, so the two in the trimmer base plus the next two pieces, they are all the same size and they go in pocket C. The next two, they're the same size also, but not for long. We'll cut them horizontally at four and a half. Put those in pocket D. And here we have some larger pieces that can be set aside for potential use. Not in a pocket. Now I'm checking the grain direction on the white. So which way does it dip? I want it dipping easily top to bottom. Not to confuse you, but that means the grain direction is running this way and our future folds will run in the same direction. Okay, we'll cut this at 11 and a quarter and six and a quarter. Rotate and cut at nine. Large piece set aside for scoring. This other narrow piece, we're gonna trim horizontally at four. File this in pocket B and scrap. The next larger pieces, there should be two, they're currently five by 12. We'll cut these at 10 and three quarters and seven. Set aside these two larger pieces to be scored. These other white bar tingles, they're three and three quarter by five. Pocket A, long strip here, we can cut horizontally, both of them, at seven. Larger piece, pocket C, and some scraps. You know, all kinds of scraps I've left behind there. And again, you can decide if you want to hang on to these until you're completely done making the cards. It's entirely up to you. Now it's time to trim our cut aparts. And there's going to be an area here on the right. Now what I'm looking at are these very pale registration marks. If you're new to club scrap, this might be new to you. And what I like to do is align that mark with the outside edge of the steel blade on my trimmer base. So if I put this in at 11 and three quarters, that's pretty close to being aligned. And then of course you can fine tune from there. And then we're gonna slide down to around seven. And one more cut in this direction at three and a half. And then rotate. Just let these piles accumulate to the right of the trimmer base. We'll cut at nine and a half to remove those smaller pieces and then four and three quarters. These two will be placed in pocket A, and then we need to separate the two smaller pieces. Also pocket A. Then we kind of repeat that whole thing. So trim this at nine and a half and four and three quarters. Pocket A. Pick up the two smaller ones, trim horizontally at the mark. It's gonna be one and three quarters. And you'll see how I did that sort of the midpoint or I wasn't way up here when I was doing it. I did it closer to me, to my eyeballs so I could see better. Pocket A. Now the very next strip, we'll pick these up and our first cut's gonna be at 11 and eight and a quarter, five and a half, 
two and three quarters. These measurements I'm giving you aren't really listed anywhere. I'm just sort of looking at where the registration marks land and then telling you the measurement at which it, it was. Okay, so then these all go in, all the rectangles that are the same size go in pocket C. And then this little gift row, it's kind of a bonus thing, but I used it in card set B. And we do have a little uh, scrap there. Okay, the next piece, let's place this in the trimmer so that H is just a, a number, is in the upper left corner. And be real careful here because if you look only at the top, you'll slice through the art at the bottom. So we're gonna go all the way over to eight, eight-ish <laughs> inches, and then I'm guessing four, yes, four. Rotate, and then we're gonna cut again at nine, six, and three. Stack all these up, and that goes in pocket B. And then the next strip is kind of gonna, the same thing will happen. This will be nine, six, and three. And these also go in pocket B. Now, we, we want to remove the narrowest pieces first. So I'll start at 11, 10, nine, eight, and then I want you to rotate. This is much easier to do it this way. It's fewer cuts in a way, fewer inconvenient cuts. We're gonna cut it two inches vertically, then rotate, and then we're gonna cut at six, four, and two. Okay, so cue the confetti and cue the confetti. Both go in pocket A. These other two, party and celebrate, D. Same thing here. So we'll cut at six, four, and two. The gifts both go in A, and the yays go in D. And lastly, we have these uh, long rectangles, pocket C. So that was cutting for the 14 cards. Now we just have this transparency. So what I want you to do when you when you receive this, if it still has the um, the white tissue separator paper attached, leave it attached when you go to trim this. It's so much easier. Um, we will cut this horizontally at six and three. Then you have two strips that are the same size. These are three by eight and a half. We'll cut them horizontally at four and a quarter. That's gonna give us the four windows that we need for our shaker cards in set A. And this gives you enough material to make two more shaker cards on your own if you wish. Set that aside. Lastly, the Renea foil. And you know, when we get a product like this, and I love it so much, and you know, it's 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 made in Germany, it's not inexpensive, but it's a quality product. I want it to go as far as possible. So here's how we're gonna do that. If you can do this, it's completely optional. Um, or if you wish, you can you can wait until the end and then just choose to use it as you like. But if you want to use it the way I did, we're gonna place in the place this in the trimmer horizontally at ten and a half, and then eight and three quarters. Seven, five and a quarter, and three and a half. Now, this section is basically leftover. It's not a scrap, it's a leftover, and you can use this as you wish. You can uh, die cut it, punch it, emboss it, whatever you like. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to set it aside. And then we have a series of one, two, three, four strips that are the same size. Let's deal with those first. We need to, tr I'm gonna do them two at a time and we're gonna trim them horizontally at five and three quarters. So basically all we're doing is taking off a little smidge. To me, that's an acceptable size to scrap, okay? <laughs> then the other two that are the same size, we're also gonna trim those at five and three quarters just take off the smidge and these are used in pocket uh, card set B they are embossed but I'll kind of show you how that works a little bit later now we have one more narrow strip we're going to turn these into one and a half inch squares so let's cut at four and a half three 
And I'm going to take it down here to cut this at one and a half. So hopefully, I'll just double check. Here we've landed ourselves four squares. These are used in card set C. Whew. All right, I hope you're not too mentally exhausted to make cards with me because that is our next step. I guess before we can get started with our card making, we'll do some scoring and we'll just tackle that stack the way it landed. I think I pretty much know all these scores from memory. The first piece will be five by seven. We'll score horizontally at three and a half. And that's going to make our two bonus cards for set D. So I'll pile that in the final pocket here. And maybe I'll just put this under the score pile. Okay, then here we have... This is the six and a half, or is that six and a quarter by nine? We'll score this horizontally at two and a quarter, and then flip the card bottom to top or top to bottom and score it four and a half. So again, that score at two and a quarter. Make sure you're careful that you're getting two and a quarter. Flip, don't rotate, <laughs> and score it four and a half, I guess. And all of this, these two go in uh, pocket B. Next, we've got two of them. They're, they're a seven by 10 card bases. We'll score at five. And I scored both at the same time by pressing firmly. If you don't feel comfortable with that, no worries. That's pocket C. Now I have these four yellow rectangles. They're not quite square. And when you place these into the score pile, you want to make sure that they're vertical. So this should be four and that should be four and a half. I want you to score at three and a half. So vertically at three and a half. And these last two, I'm gonna do at the same time, three and a half. And all of these will go in pocket B. Lastly, I have, well not lastly, I've got two more seven by tens. So we'll score these horizontally at five. Pocket C. Now I have two more of the six and a quarter by nine. So we'll score first at two and a quarter, then flip bottom to top, four and a half. Pocket B. Now I'm going to take these two prints. They're five and a half by eight and a half. We'll score at four and a quarter. Pocket A. And we have two pink card bases. Again, at four and a quarter. Pocket A. Okay, now it really is time we get to make the cards now. I've taken everything out of pocket A, and what I'm looking for first is the base for each card. So I'm going to distribute a vertical, let's see, a vertical card, and what will become a horizontal, and then a vertical and a horizontal here. Okay, so those are the bases, and now we're going to deal out the rest of the items that belong with these cards. First, I'll find some colored panels, and they're various sizes. We have a set of four larger panels. So let's take the white one for this pink base in both cases, and then an aqua and a blue. Then we're going to find our smaller nesting panels, aqua, blue, blue, Aqua, so you can see a good distribution of color. Now, if you're working with your own papers and recycling the formulas that I've given you here, um, just make sure that the color colors as you distribute them sort of uh, match. They don't have to match in color, but in variety. Then we have four little uh, windows, and then we'll do the happy candle blowing, wish making day, this teal gift image, the cake. And then I wish you happiness every day. And then we have these smaller sentiments to distribute. So the pink cue the confetti goes with the first card. The large blue gift. Another cue the confetti. And then an aqua colored gift. And then for the innies, this cue the confetti card gets the enjoy. And this with the blue box gets congratulations. I think that would be really nice for a baby card actually. Here's It's Your Year to Sparkle, with the cue the confetti, and then, um, but a little extra today goes over here. So what we're going to do is make one of these cards together, and I choose this one. It's super fun. The rest of these, you can gather up the pieces and insert all of them into an A2 size envelope, if you wish, or just set aside for later. And um, we're going to make a shaker card. 
If you don't want to make the shaker card, not a problem. Here's how you get around that. Just simply take this panel, add the cue, the confetti to it with maybe some foam adhesive, and then you can nest that. It'll be out just on the white, and that's fine. If you'd like, you can adapt this to fit or put it on the inside and layer this onto the front of the card, add the inner. It's not a problem if you if you just don't have it in you. I get it, not a big deal. I'm gonna try to show you the easiest way to make a frame opening. Now, way number one would be to use um, a punch or a, a thin die and a, a cutting machine to cut the window. Here's a super easy way, uh, zero equipment required, except for like a craft knife, which most of us have. I'm just gonna make an X from corner to corner here. Doesn't even have to be straight. And then take a grid ruler and press it firmly just inside the edge of the dotted line there and pick up one of these triangular flaps and tear it away. That's garbage, okay? And then rotate around the frame to create the full square shaped opening. Okay, this next step is kind of critical and I kept forgetting to do it, so I'm just gonna do it right now so I remember. What you wanna do is flip this panel over and you should have a panel that's perfectly sized and smaller than this one, okay? Smaller than the cut apart. Temporarily center this onto that panel. And if you're worried about it staying there, you can secure that with a piece of like washi tape or temporary adhesive or something. But temporarily center it. And I'm gonna now add the cue, the confetti to the panel with permanent adhesive. So now that's right where we want it to be eventually. The next step is to take the transparency film and we need to adhere this and you can use your favorite two-way adhesive. I'm using some uh, book binding glue in a needle tip applicator that I left the lid off of last night. So it's kind of, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we'll adhere that. Nice. Okay. Next, we need some, <laughs> I have a small roll of double-sided tape that I borrowed from Karen. And I'm going to, since it is such a generous roll, I'm gonna cut off a strip of this and then build a little frame around my window opening. Okay, and if you want, you can also just to balance out the placement, I'm going to add a smaller piece over on this end. Again, sorry, Karen, thanks for giving me your, your foam adhesive. <laughs> okay, now, I, you know, I kind of battle about whether or not to remove the backing at this point or remove it after I put the contents of the shaker into the window frame. And I think I'm going to go with this, this route because it's just really easy to get this difficult to get the backing off of these strips and sometimes that just creates a lot of motion for whatever you're going to insert into the window okay now for the, the confetti this is included in your kit um so i'm going to dump a portion i have some brads in here too for later so i'm going to try to be careful not to throw a brad into my shaker card that's a nice generous portion there and here's the critical step. We've got this cue the confetti in the frame, and I want to make sure when I put this on here, for example, this is the orientation of the card, right? This is where I want this to be in the window. So all I have to do is visually center this back onto the panel. And then you burnish to make sure it seals well. And you say a little prayer. Hope it worked. And yes, it does. So nice. And then I can just... Um, attach this now to the white panel. Center that. If you want, you can add one of these cute little twist ties um, to this. I forgot to do it before I attached it, and it's much better if you attach the twist tie to the card before you nest it onto the panel. Um, and then I'll add some adhesive to the back of this. Of course, I never folded my card base, a technicality. And because we're folding with the grain, it folds very easily. And then we'll add our enjoy. I see I have some glue falling out of this. Maybe I'll use 
my book binding glue. Now on the original card, here I've got my little twist tie added to the front. And on the, in on the inside, I used this punched shape. Where did that shape come from? Well, I used a die cut that I had that fit this, and I saved the leftover punched out area and used it on the inside of this card. So if you just tear away the triangles, you won't have anything uh, left over, and that's totally okay. But if you do end up, you know, die cutting the window opening, then you have a little extra accent piece for the inside of the card. So this is the other vertical one in the set. And then we also have a horizontal card to utilize a little bit of this beautiful ribbon. I just simply wrapped it around the, t the corner and taped the ends on the back. And then we have this adorable little gift here. And again, that would be wonderful for um, a baby baby arrival. I know of a very special baby that arrived recently, so that's where this one's going to go. Okay, that is set A. Great job on the shaker. All right, I've taken everything out of pocket B, and if you're following along with the instructions, I'm now on page oh, somewhere page four okay set b all kinds of fun things going on with these cards we'll start with the bases and these are all going to be oriented in the same direction first one we'll put the white and then how about our blue another white and a teal card or aqua card base now if you stack up what we've got left from the pocket we'll take those largest panels and let's distribute a pink a print another pink and another print. Each card will receive a yellow. And if you would like, this wasn't in the original uh, um, vision that I had for the instructions, but these uh, printed card bases are quite busy. So I went ahead and added a white panel for the inside of the card. So you have a place to write. Uh, let's see, I also added this one to the gifts to this card here. Each card will receive one piece of the Renea foil. And then how about a blue strip, an aqua strip, a printed strip, and a pink. And now all the rest of these are cut aparts so that are designed to pair together. So you're such a gift will pair with thank you. It's your birthday pairs with have a blast. Age is just a number. Yours is a big number, and make a wish. Have a wonderful birthday. All right, why don't we go ahead and make this this white card here. We'll stack up the rest of these pieces and set them aside. And as is our practice here at Club Scrap, all of this goes to Karen, uh, who can then make her set of cards since I've already made mine. She thinks it's pretty cool that she doesn't have to do all this prep work. Isn't that kind of nice? Okay, so let's take this card base. We're going to bury the bump of the score line right at the center. And this is the reason why we flipped that card base as we were scoring it, so that there's another score line now right here. It's a bump, and I'm going to bury that bump by folding over the front flap of the card so that it folds exactly in half. And just solidify that with your bone folder if you like. Then we also have um, this yellow piece that's been scored. So we'll solidify that. And here's our yellow, um, or I'm sorry, our pink panel, the larger pink panel. And because of what I have planned for this card, I'm going to adhere this panel, this tab of the tab of the yellow panel around to the back, kind of more toward the top of this vertical pink panel. I forgot to put the lid on this again, but we should be all right. And I'll use a little bit of book binding glue to secure that in place. Okay, flip that back over. And this will end up getting adhered right here into the main back panel of our card base. Make sure that the yellow panel is coming in from the right edge of the card. Now this ends up uh, being placed here and the measurement of this panel is four and a quarter. So I'm going to quickly trim that down to four and a quarter. Okay, then I'll just put a little adhesive on the back of this. And it fits really nicely into that spot. This is the only card where I have this item and the only card where I put this more toward the top. Now we've got the You're Such a Gift that should fit perfectly onto the yellow panel, the front side of it. Nice. And then the thank you 
will fit onto the back side of the yellow panel so that you, this whole area here you can write your custom thank you note. Okay, now this blue panel fits here. I'm not going to adhere that quite yet. And then this will end up sitting on top of it. And that does look very nice. But we do have the Renea foil. I'm going to show you what I did with this. So I brought in my Big Shot and I've got an embossing folder. If you happen to have one of these, great. If not, it still is a really cool, beautiful decorative element here. So I'll just sandwich this foil in between the die and I like that it graduates from larger circles to smaller circles. I'll sandwich this between my two glass or two plastic or acrylic whatever. <laughs> I don't have all the terminology down and when I pull this out it's just got a really nice look to it. So I'll set this aside. Okay so now we can take this and I've trimmed it and planned everything so that this will fit perfectly onto the blue. Oh and that's another thing I want to mention. You can use this gold side up and wow isn't that beautiful i think i'm going to go that route on this card so we'll place this gold side up or you could have done turquoise up whichever you prefer oh but it looks so nice oh i love it okay at this point i'm going to take some of this pretty yellow ribbon and just tie this bottom area here that's the area not where it's not embossed quite as much which is fine now I can add my panel to the card flap. Oop. Centers right on there. Love it. You're such a gift. Isn't that nice? Now here are the other ones. Here's the one with, uh, this is the teal side up. I think I like the gold side up better. So there you go. Hindsight being 2020. Here's It's Your Birthday. And then there's the white panel that added to the inside of the card. So you have, a, you have room to write. And age is just a number. Yours is a big number and make a wish. For these, I just took a piece of this really beautiful, I think it's seven eighths inch, gorgeous gold pearl ribbon, folded it in half, and then I taped it behind this front cut apart. That's all there was to it, just a little two inch piece. Okay, we'll take these items, set them aside, and we'll get on to our final set of cards. Well, I misspoke. It's not final set because we still have set D. This is set C. And after taking everything out of the pocket and I see these little foil pieces in here, I'm going to show you what I did um, to make these adorable pinwheels. And they're quick and easy, surprisingly quick and easy. So if you take one of the squares and take scissors and imagine that there's a diagonal line running from corner to opposite corner, I'm going to make a cut that goes not quite to the middle, but that would be on that imaginary diagonal line. I'm going to rotate and make that same cut from all four corners. If you wanted to, you could use a ruler, but it doesn't need even need to be that precise. Then I'm going to fold over the point of the corner toward the center. And then I'm going to go to the next free corner. <laughs> fold toward the center. The next one and rotate and our final little corner. And that makes this adorable little pinwheel. And what I love about this foil, because it's it's got paper involved, it's it just is so much stronger and easier to work with than if it was just foil without paper laminated in between. So I'm taking my um, paper piercing tool, piercing a hole, and this is why I had the brads handy in my little confetti bin here. So I'll grab a mini gold brad. Hopefully you have one of those in your stash because I didn't include it in the kit. At the time I just wasn't really sure what I was going to do with the foil. Right, so pop that right into the center. And I like to do it right through the cork board too. It just gives me something firm to push it into. And then from the back, separate the prongs and you've got an adorable little pinwheel. This collapsed here a little bit. I can take a I can add a little bit of roundness to this. It's amazing how you can shape this. If you go to the Renea Foil website, you can find a lot more cool project ideas there. Okay, look at that sweet pinwheel. You would repeat that and make additional pinwheels out of the three remaining uh, squares that we have of the foil. And because you have this other scrap, you also have the opportunity to make even more. Or, you, like I said, you can try some other things with that piece. Moving on with our cards now, let's deal out our card bases as we usually do. We'll start with pink and then some aqua, a blue, and a print. And again, that's what I love about this method is that we get 
to um, replicate these formulas with other papers. So then we'll, just, we'll do a yellow here and a print here, a yellow. And then we go to a different sized panel. So some cards have more panels than others. So this one, yellow gets a print. This yellow gets a pink. This pink <laughs> gets a, an aqua. And this gets another aqua. This gets another blue. And this gets a blue. Wow. So all those panels, some, some of the cards have two panels and others have a total of three. Plus we have the sentiment panel. So we've got happy birthday, happy, happy, happy. You're such a gift and you know your old when. Then each panel also gets a strip. So a white, blue, white, and aqua. Then each card gets an inner sentiment. So let's celebrate your existence with cake. <laughs> and then just the word birthday here. This one is thinking of you and when the candles cost more than the cake, happy birthday. All right, so we'll set aside these three and this is an extremely simple construction involved on this pink card that we'll do together. One of the fun things I wanna show you is that in your kit, oh, we had so many goodies. It was just, you couldn't even decide what to use. We have this really fun laser, like iridescent washi tape. So I'm just gonna extend a piece of this tape directly onto the white strip. The white strip is basically just a vessel for tape. <laughs> and then I'll wrap the ends around to the back of this. And set that aside just for now. Then we're gonna start layering our card. We'll fold the pink card base in half while burying that bump. And again, because we're, um, we're folding with the grain, it's a lovely fold. And with my ruler then, I will position this so that it's a half of an inch in from the edge, the long folded edge of the card. And then I'll take my panel and that'll be a half an inch from that. It's a great way to make sure you're level. There was one card I made, I wasn't using my ruler. I think I attached and then took off and reattached the panel no less than three times, and I still don't think it was straight. I believe the margin here on this one is a quarter of an inch. Yes, it is. Oh, so nice. Now for this this next one, this is the part where I'm going to at attach the, the washi tape strip. Again, how about we use the ruler, make sure that's nice and level on there. We'll go about an inch and a half from the edge of the card, rest it on the ruler's edge, and then drop it down. Okay, and then comes the blue panel. We just keep layering panel upon panel, and it's such a fun and festive card, isn't it? Okay, oh, before I do this, I'm going to put the birthday on here, not too late. We have one more step. It's all about order of assembly. Let's grab this gorgeous pink satin ribbon. It's not satin, it's like a, it's a silk, actually. I adore this ribbon so much. It only comes in limited colors, so when it matches, I get it. Hope that's okay with you. Grab my fabric scissors again. And then, <laughs> one more layer. So to me, learning how to use the ruler to help you layer, and here as I eyeball this, can really make a big difference on your cards. Okay, for the inside, let's celebrate your existence with cake. And what I'm gonna point out here is that we have all of these scraps, all these pieces of paper laying over here as optional decor, and I think that I did um, measure this and then cut it quarter of an inch larger, both in length and width, in order to mat my sentiment on the inside. And that's pretty much all there is to it for these uh, a seven inch cards. Let me show you the finished samples here. Here's the original. Let's see what I did on the inside. Yes, I used the blue to mat that sentiment. Here I added three of these adorable pinwheels. Now, I just want to point out that when I made um, the pinwheels, you have a choice. You can either ha start out with the... Um, the gold side facing up or the teal side facing up. That way your pinwheels might look different. Um, it depends on if you want a variety, if you want consistency, it's really up to you. It's, it's fun too to see how different this washi tape looks when you back it with blue versus 
white or even pink. A completely different look in both of those cases. So I really love that about the tape. On this other card, I um, matted this again in, in the aqua and just created a solitary bow that I added with uh, a glue line. And here, gorgeous with the, the gold pearl bow. And I'll just give you another quick tutorial on that in case you missed it in previous episodes. <laughs> um, I make two bunny ears out of the ribbon, like so, then crisscross them. Whichever ear is on the top is the one that goes through the hole, runs around in the back and goes through the hole that you've created, or the loop, I should say. And then you can pull the ends to create a nice shape here until you're happy with the size and like the way the ribbon is laying. I always try to source um, double-sided satin or even this ribbon is beautiful on both sides so it doesn't really matter which you know how you do this it's going to look nice from either side and that can kind of be a lot easier so when you trim those tails just fold the ribbon in half lengthwise and then cut toward the center of the bow this probably is a little bigger i don't want to mess with it too much and then you can attach it to your card so so pretty on the inside i matted the sentiment of course to add a little color which is really nice to have that option on the inside all right set d coming right up there isn't quite as much in the d pocket because we're only making two cards and the base of each card will be white and then we've got a nesting panel in blue and aqua each card will also have a yellow nest for the front sentiment which is going to be the yay and the yay or party this one says party this one says yay and on the inside this will say celebrate and this will say yay <laughs> now you have an extra yellow so instead of throwing it out i just had you cut another one so that you could have a map for the inside and now we have this assortment of strips so basically what you can decide then like let's say we could take a um a larger pink strip it should be the same width as the panel and then a smaller printed nesting strip and on this side we can have a larger printed strip that should be the same width as the panel and then a smaller nesting strip and see how those colors alternate i believe that on my scrap pile I have two more lengths of paper and perhaps I'll make a note in the trimming diagram that you can just double up and you can make a second nesting option for the inside of the card by simply cutting these at five inches. It's going to be five inches wide. That should match the width of the card itself. So easy peasy on that. In fact, I'm going to go make that cut. Just trim these at five inches. Great. And then now I can nest this onto here and this onto here, and that'll be great for the inside of the card as well. I'll set aside one of these and we'll make the other. Okay, and this is this is nice and easy and fun. Love this. And we've planned ahead, so again, a nice fold is accomplished on the white. Now we take our blue panel, and we also have the laser washi tape here. I'll find the end. Let's go ahead and stretch that right across the confetti print here. I'll trim and then wrap the ends around to the back. Then add some adhesive and nest it onto the pink panel. And you can even see the confetti through. Oh, I think I put this on the wider piece. So to save a little time, I'm going to trim this down to four and three quarters. Four and a half, that is. Right. Now, when you attach this to the blue panel, again, you can use your adhesive and you know maybe give it like a quarter of an inch from the bottom edge then take your book binding glue and we can add how about one of these cute little twist ties i had so many goodies in this kit that i really just didn't even need them and the yellow twist tie that i purchased wasn't quite as bright as i really wanted it to be so you know can't win them all, right, my friends? But they're kind of cute. Okay, now that doesn't reach the end, but that's okay because we're going to be adding our little element here. So we'll add the word yay to the yellow panel. And one, oh, I just spilled the confetti. One last thing we can do is add, I'm going to show you how I do this. You can really extend the life of your ribbon 
by stretching a piece across your card and just wrapping the ends around to the back. Don't go too tight on that. And then you can take another piece of ribbon and just tie a bow onto the existing. Again, with this grain uh, ribbon, there's no right or wrong side to it. Lastly, I'll take some foam adhesive circles. I'm just gonna cut them in half and add some dimension because there's a lot going on here around the sentiment. And then I can peel away the, the backing by pulling on the tabs, which I much prefer. <laughs> Lastly, we'll take our adhesive and we can attach this to the card. I, the second one I made, I did at an angle and I really like that. For the inside, we'll nest the celebrate onto the yellow square that we have. Then we can take our strips. I did accidentally uh, embellish the longer one earlier, so I'm using, oh, let's do it up here. I'm gonna show you how I did this. Got some nestables here. So attractive. And then take the yellow. And I'm gluing, see, I'm, oh, completely running downhill here, my friends. You've never done that before. I am certain of it, right? <laughs> oh, that was really bad. Okay, here we go. And then we have our celebrate, plus tons of room to, well, not tons, but we don't really want to write a whole novel, do we? You can write more up here if you had to, but place to sign your name. Yay, you're good to go. Wow, what a great set of cards. I hope you've loved this tutorial, that you've learned a lot along the way, and you enjoyed making these cards. And as I always remember that, all you need to do is locate papers from your stash that you can then substitute for these colors. I usually make a side-by-side -side list, and then um, write, write on the instructions what you're using to substitute. Trim as directed. This arrow indicates which way the paper needs to dip easily as you cut the papers and make another set of 14 fabulous cards following these instructions. If you do this, please reach out and let me know that you did it and I wanna see what you've made. I'll see you next month with Turquoise.